This episode of the We Like Shooting Show is brought to you by Second Call Defense, Manicor Arms, the Sonoran Desert Institute, Fax and Firearms, the Patriot Patch Company, and Brownells. Welcome to the We Like Shooting Show, episode 294. Tonight we're going to talk about Adam Kraut, Sightmark, Phone Scope, Gucci P Mags, Kentucky Ballistics, and more. Our cast tonight is news junkie from Washington, probably a communist, Savage 1R. We've also got River's Edge Tactical's Jeremy Paz Derek. Straight from Michigan, we got the Machine Gun Moses, Aaron Krieger, Nick Lynch is dead, my name is Sean, and I want to welcome you to the show. Yeah, so, uh, Nick passed away, and here's his microphone, I leave it there just in memory, and because I'm waiting to replace him with someone better. You know what, uh, I don't even feel bad about that. No, why would you feel bad? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know what else I don't feel bad about? Hmm. My love for Manicore Arms. So first off, Manicor Arms makes a lot of stuff. Aaron, what's your favorite Manicor Arms product? Transformer Rail. Savage, what's your favorite Manicor Arms product? Uh, that would have to be the Bullpup conversion kit for the uh, CZ Scorpion. Jeremy, what's your favorite Manicor Arms product? Uh, Sven Janssen. That's actually a very good answer. Mine is probably the Transformer Rail with Sven running a very close second. So it doesn't really matter what you have, whether you have an AK, Tavor, X95, uh, Bryn, AR, it doesn't matter. They make all kinds of good stuff, and you can find it all at manicorearms.com. The coupon code is WLS10, saves you 10% off all day, every day, and I highly recommend you go check it out. All right. So now before we get into things, first up, we have YouTube Sensation as a guest. He's uh, grown super fast. I subscribed to his channel a while back, and I've been enjoying every single video that he comes out with. Uh, please welcome to the show, Scott, from the YouTube channel, Kentucky Ballistics. What's up, Scott? How's it going, man? All good. How are you doing? Doing great. Uh, first off, how the heck did you get into did you get into YouTube? Like, what, what happened that you were just like, you know what? My life is, uh, there's something that is missing, and I think that it's being a YouTube sensation. <laughs> well, uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't plan on it getting as big as it, it is now, but, uh, started as just a hobby. Like I watched gun channels, you know, forever, like back in the day and it looked like a lot of fun. And one day I decided to go out in my backyard and shoot a bowling ball with a snub nose 454 and record it. And <laughs> it's just been going ever since. So that, that was actually your first video that you put out and it was the, the 454 Casul versus a 16 pound bowling ball. Uh, that was, yeah. Three, so three years, three years you've been doing it. Three years. Yeah. I did it for about a year and I was just kind of goofing around. Um, wasn't really getting serious. And then about almost two years ago, I decided to start taking things more serious and actually, you know, dedicating more time to YouTube. And now it's turned into, you know, what it is now. It's pretty crazy, man. I want to talk about all that, but let's start a little, a little bit earlier in life. Like when did you get into guns? Has it been kind of a lifelong thing or was it something you found later? Uh, I, it was something I kind of found later when I was a kid. I, I liked guns, but my dad wasn't a gun guy. So I didn't really have guns around. Uh, he took me shooting one time. I shot like a 22 rifle and that's about it. And, uh, I wouldn't tell I was about 20 or 21 that I really started shooting. Um, and then that's ever since then, honestly, what really got me hooked, I, all I had was a nine millimeter and my wife, uh, she had a 357 Magnum. She had a Smith and Wesson 686. Yeah. So she had a much bigger gun than I did and I had no idea. So I went shooting with her one day. I shot that once. And then after that, I just, I never stopped. <laughs> Dang. That's pretty awesome. Uh, so do you, is there a line of work or something that you, that you do that kind of brought you to guns as well? Yeah, a lot of people, well, no one really knows other than close friends, uh, but I'm in law enforcement. Uh, that's the number one question I get on YouTube is like, were you in the military? You know, what branch did you serve in? And I'm like, I was in the military, something similar, but not <laughs> not the military. So, yeah, I've been in law enforcement for about seven years now. Very cool, man. And, I mean, clearly, I think people think very often that, that cops deal with firearms constantly. and. I personally don't think that's the case because I've actually seen it. Like you guys have a, a huge job. There's tons of stuff to know and firearms are just one aspect of it. Would you agree with that or disagree? Oh, no, I would agree. I mean, not 
just because someone's in law enforcement doesn't mean that they know everything about firearms. Um, uh, well, I mean, most you just don't know their ass from a hole in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Prison company accepted, of course. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will say though, the higher up you get in law enforcement, there is better training. Like I've been to both the regular, uh, standard police academy. I've also been to the state police academy and there's a, there's a lot better training there. Uh, but if you don't, it's a, it's a diminishing skill. If you don't do that on the, on the regular, on your own, it, it's going to go away. And if you don't pursue more information, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to know those things. Yeah, for sure. So there's, there's a lot of people that do YouTube videos and there was a kind of a turning point for you. What what was the turning point for your, your YouTube channel? And you, you already mentioned kind of when you got serious, what, what was it? I, I really, I think a lot of it was me getting on camera and letting people see who I am because before I wasn't getting on camera because I was paranoid because I'm a cop. So, you know, I didn't want people to see my face and stuff. And, uh, then I decided I was just going to let everybody see my, my face and get, you know, show my personality a little bit. And, uh, I don't know, just been doing crazier and crazier things. Also had a few videos go viral and, uh, yeah. I would say that's about it. I really don't I really don't know what the secret is. It just all of a sudden just took off. <laughs> it's awesome. Let's talk about that viral video. You have one that just absolutely blew up. What was what was it? Um the fifty BMG versus Stretch Armstrongs. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> it's almost got seven million views now. Woo! Oh yeah. man. It came out six months ago. Um it is pretty awesome. And, and you've even gone back to it. I mean, it's not even the first time you've actually shot a stretch Armstrong, right? Cause you shot one with uh, another 50 caliber, but a handgun, right? Yeah. Yeah. I shot. Well, I guess that's where I got the idea for that from is, uh, everyone started shooting them for some reason. And I was like, I want to see how bulletproof this thing is. So I shot it with a 500 Magnum and uh, he didn't stop that, but he did slow it down a lot. And then I was like, let's get a bunch of them and see if we can stop a 50 and uh spoiler alert. It, Five stretch Armstrongs and a cinder block will stop an armor piercing incendiary 50 BMG. So, <laughs> all right. So, note to self: make a bulletproof yeah. vest out of stretch Armstrong. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, what was it like to to get that viral video and just kind of have it just absolutely blow up and everyone sees it? And I mean, it brings notoriety, right? Yeah. It's it's a. Uh, I don't know. I don't really know how to describe it. It's really cool. It's kind of surreal, especially when it really started. Uh, blowing up and you start seeing more people subscribe and stuff and uh, social blade. I was watching it like daily, you know? (laughs) Yeah. That that's pretty amazing, man. Uh, But you've also had some other stuff hit big too. Uh, Kettlebell Atlas stone. What do you think it is that makes people just want to see destruction? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) I have no idea. (laughs) It's fun though. I'm going to keep doing it. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. That that was my next question. Are, Are you having fun? Oh yeah. I have a blast. Like, um, it's funny cause people will comment be like, this guy's fake laugh and he laughs after every shot. And like, I'm legitimately just <laughs> having that much fun destroying things. How, how long have you been doing this? Uh, three years. Yeah. Give it a couple more. <laughs> a well, couple more yeah. He's been doing YouTube videos for three years, but he's been shooting for much longer. Yeah. Yeah. I've been shooting since I guess like shooting avidly since 2021. Now I'm th- and I'm 30 now, so <laughs> so see Jeremy and, and I still get giddy when I shoot, especially when we're shooting stuff. Like- I'm at, I'm, at, I'm at about making YouTube videos, not shooting. Oh yeah, eh, let me know when you make one, Jeremy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I still have the most views on our f-ing channel. It's actually true. It is. Uh, well, which which video was that? Is it with the Henry? Henry. Henry, that's where, the, right. where the camera falls over a bunch of times. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, so professional. Scott, do you, <laughs> do you feel a ton of like pressure to just get better and better, or are you just kind of like, I think this is going to be fun, so I'm going to do it. I don't care what the result is. Um, I'm really competitive and uh, kind of competitive with myself. Like I always feel like I can do better, so I'm constantly looking for new things to do, new videos, better ways to improve my videos. So. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking to have fun, but I want it to be, you know, a good video too. I want it to be worth it. And I want my, more than anything, I want my viewers to enjoy it. Yeah, totally. And I, so when I watch the videos, like you have a funny skit and you've got this recurring, uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex as well. Tell us like, how the hell did that start? I, I don't know. I wouldn't start. <laughs> uh, 
that's just one of those ideas I had, and um, he's just been around ever since. He's kind of my antagonist. He yes. lives out in the woods, and he tries to kill me. So <laughs> I love it. That's freaking awesome. What would you say is uh, the channel personality? Like when, when someone comes and watches videos from Kentucky Ballistics, you know, what's the personality there? What, what do you think the um, – I guess that's the best word I can possibly think. Like uh, my demographic? No, no, you're like your videos personality. Like, I mean, let me put it this way. Hickok 45, he's like that down home grandpa that, you know, he just, he's going to spin you yarn and he's going to show you that he's a pretty accomplished shooter and things like that. And then you've got, you know, demolition ranch and, and demo ranch. He does the, the skits and he's like this, you know, bigger than life personality. And then you realize that he's a veterinarian. He's got all this other stuff that he cares about. And the personality for him, I would say kind of his family for us, it's like fart jokes and stupidity, but what would you say is the personality of uh, Kentucky ballistics? I don't know. I've really thought about it. It's just, just more, just, just having fun. And, um, that's it. Just having fun. I, yeah. I mean, that's all I look to do for people coming to my channel is I just want you to enjoy the video, have fun and, and see how much fun you can have with firearms. Yeah, I agree. Doing it in a safe way. I agree. I think that's I, actually a good ex- explanation. I would say I'm probably at least what I get accused of mostly is I'm I'm more of the demo ranch vibe. Is that's what most of the people leave in my comments, uh, good and bad. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, that is a compliment because demo ranch is awesome. Uh, yeah, I like his channel. I, I met him at Shot Show. He's a super nice guy. Yeah, I. I've never met him, but I subscribed to all three of his channels, uh, vet ranch, demo ranch and off the ranch and watch the videos religiously. It's just, it's fun. I like them. What, uh, what are your favorite channels, uh, to watch or do you watch YouTube at all? I mean, I used to watch, uh, I, I loved FPS Russia back in the day, you know, back <laughs> before, day. He, back the day before he was gone, you know? And, um, I really don't watch a lot of YouTube anymore because I try to uh, keep my stuff original. And so if I, I'm afraid that I'm going to watch other people's videos and then get ideas from their videos. So I try to just, just keep to myself. Occasionally I'll watch, uh, I'm still subscribed to everybody. Um, but I really don't watch too much YouTube anymore. Yeah, I can understand. Honestly, like we get busy, so I don't have a chance, but I kind of force myself to watch are there any channels you're subscribed to outside the gun world that you've enjoyed in the past? Mm, uh, yeah, like fail army. Uh, I still watch them. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of who I watch now. Uh, I know it's tough. It's- I remember when my, I remember when my buddy had a video on fail army. <laughs> really? Did you, ever, did you ever see the drunk? Did you ever see, yeah. Did you ever see the drunk redneck guy that falls off the back of the, uh, that falls off the back of the, uh, uh, UTV with a shotgun in his hand. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I did see that. I think I have too. Yeah, that's my buddy Will Billy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's just great, Jeremy. No, why why couldn't you come up with that, Jeremy? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been amazing. Uh, I love it. It, it well, didn't I, happen on purpose. He does have screen barfing, though. <laughs> yes, Jeremy is the screen barfer. What I watch more than anything is probably Joe Rogan, the Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah, and yeah. Like, Brandon Schaub, he's got his own uh, podcast now. Uh, I like I like UFC a lot, so I watch those a lot just to kind of keep up with all of that. Um, but other than that, I really I really don't watch too much YouTube anymore. I try to just to support everybody. Yeah, uh, it's hard. It totally is, man. So I mean, you have like a, you, you've got a full time job. You have got you know uh, you you mentioned wife. Uh, there all kinds of stuff going on in your life, like. How tough is it to make videos these days? Very. It's very tough. Uh, yeah, full-time police officer, husband, father, uh, and YouTuber. And then we have our uh, other endeavors, too. So, like, it's – I mean, it's it's really hard. Uh, it is coming to the point, though, where I'm considering going full-time. Nice. Uh, full-time YouTube. And, um, oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. I'm, I, uh, I enjoy it that much. You know, it's, it's become my passion and I feel like, I mean, why not? You know, the opportunity's there. So I agree. I agree. I love that story. Actually. Why don't you tell us what's your average, what's your average range day? Like we, we know what we do and we kind of ask this of all the YouTubers that we have on, uh, but what's your average range day? Like from the time you wake up to the time you get home. 
So you mean like a film day? Yeah, or... film day, film day. Okay, so like a film day. Uh, well, it's actually about a two-day process. So the day before, I will have to gather everything, you know, get all of my supplies together, get cameras charged, you know, tripods, all of it. And then the next day, then I'll head out there. I'm spending an hour to an hour and a half just getting everything set up. And then I get the get the filming and shooting, and that takes several hours. And then cleanup for me is awful. Uh, if you've watched any of my videos, you, <laughs> from all the destruction, like there's a lot of stuff I have to pick up. Uh, so that's another you know hour or two, and uh, it it's a lot. It's a whole lot. When yeah. you're when you're out there, do you uh, do you bring help, or are you you filming all by yourself? Most time, I am by myself. Oh, that's. Myself tough if anybody has not filmed by themselves they don't know how hard that is yeah it's just me out there and cameras and tripods i'll tell you what would be hilarious if someone ever did walk up on me they'd be like what's go- this guy's crazy yeah he's, he's nuts got, <laughs> he's drunk out of his mind out of here is that a t-rex i'm getting out of here someone call the cops <laughs> exactly it is insane when you think about like all this stuff that actually has to go into it you know and you mentioned it the day before you got to get all the stuff together and magazines and ammo and the range bag and make sure that all that stuff's good to go and tripods and batteries and all that stuff. And how many cameras do you run? Um, most of the time, two, sometimes three. Uh, I'll tell you something funny though. I talked about, you know, someone walking up on me and, <laughs> yes. and seeing the T-Rex, uh, the 50 BMG versus Atlas stone, uh, in that opening, I'm in the gym and he's in the gym, right? <laughs> so I was trying to time it, like, when's a good time to go to my gym and film this? Because how am I going to explain to all these gym members, I have an, there's an inflatable T-Rex suit. Uh, and I definitely don't want to explain that to everybody. So yeah. I timed it just right. I went there late. There was one guy. And he was, he saw me break out the camera, and he was just hovering. And I was like, gosh, man, go away. <laughs> I, I leave. And he finally did. He left. And I've got everything going, and there's one person left. They're on a treadmill, and all they had to do was turn around, and they would have saw it. But they were on their phone, and I was laughing so hard because like, this guy has <laughs> no idea what's going on behind him right now. I filmed the whole thing and got out of there. The guy never saw it. I bet you dollars to donuts they had, like, security cam footage. In the- oh, they have to watch it. Footage. They're watching yeah. that the next day <laughs> just laughing their asses off i know just imagine like running through the forest in a t-rex costume and coming across some dude in orange <laughs> he's like i'm getting this one well filming, <laughs> filming around deer season is uh definitely a scary thing around here uh, <laughs> yeah geez no doubt it's coming right for us <laughs> <laughs> oh man that that's funny so yeah and then it doesn't just end after you're done filming and cleaning up and then coming home. Like, tell us about editing. Did you have that experience or did you just figure it out? I just figured it out. Uh, Back when I wasn't, you know, I was just kind of doing it for fun, uh, which I mean, it's still fun, but before I was, you know, really getting serious about it, YouTube used to have their own video editor. And I was just pointing around on that for the longest time. Uh, And then I, I finally got editing software and that was very confusing um, I actually edited my first video on actual software in the hospital after my daughter was born. And I was sitting there trying to figure it out and get a video edited to post while I was in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, man, that's awesome. Do, do you remember which uh, the first one that you after you got the software was? Uh, I think it was I think it was doing long distance shooting with an LCP nice. or something like that. That's pretty awesome, man. So you're a pretty good shot. Did you, uh, have you, have you gotten better since you started your YouTube channel? I don't think I've gotten better since, well, maybe a little bit, at least with, uh, with big bore stuff, I've gotten better. Um, the flinch factor is not really there as much anymore, but, uh, most of my shooting, I was self-taught. Uh, even when I went to the police academies, I was already a, a good shot when I was there. So I've just had a lot of good, um, uh, just older people in my life who've been shooting for a long time and give me some good pointers. That's great. What's uh What's your favorite video that you have ever recorded? Like you're just the one that you are the most proud of. Well, uh, if it goes, the one I had the most fun doing would be the flamethrower video for sure. 
Um, there's nothing more fun than lighting a 20 foot inflatable on fire with a flamethrower. So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've seen that one actually. Yeah. It's XL 18 flamethrower. That thing will dump uh five gallons of diesel fuel in about six seconds. Oh man. Like, 100 and, 110 feet of a uh, distance with that thing. Wow. That's okay. Yeah, I see it. Uh, four months ago. Perfect. Uh, yeah, it was ridiculous. Adding to my watch later done. Okay. <laughs> So that was, that was your favorite, the one that you've uh, done the most. What's the one that you put the most work into and you're like, this is going to hit huge. And then it just like wah, 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 kind of fizzles out and you're just a little bit disappointed in the results. Um, honestly, uh, I did. Well, that's happened several times. And as a lot of it has been YouTube um, where they will, they'll demonetize stuff and they say that that won't affect your views, but, it does. Yeah. I mean, oh, you'll yeah. just see it just plummet. Um, one I got pretty bummed out about was I did 50 BMG versus Anvil, and it was freezing cold that day. I was out there all day long filming. Uh, it took forever to film that, and I was so excited. And it got like 50,000 views in a day, and then YouTube just smashed it. And I was so sad about that. Um, so that was that's probably one of the more – recent ones that was kind of a bummer but then you'll i'll film a video and i'll be like you know this was fun but i don't expect it to do anything and then it just blows up I'm like what what did that what happened with that you know i don't it doesn't really seem to be a science to it sometimes i know it's so weird how many videos do you put out uh at least two a week i normally do i'll do a video and then i'll do full auto fridays oh nice um and now that I'm looking to go full time, I'm I'm going to shoot for three to four videos a week. And I may be a little overzealous, but if that's all I'm doing, I'm going to be really cranking them out. <laughs> no doubt. We definitely know that that grind a little bit. Uh, we recently just uh, in the last few weeks, we started putting out a video every single weekday. And the amount of work that has to go into that is ridiculous. Yeah, that's there's a that's a lot. <laughs> it is, it is, and but we're getting one, maybe two hundred views per video, so it's okay. We're, just, we're, doing, we're doing just fine, yeah. doing just fine. <laughs> so, so my question for you is, is this: Do we have accents, or do you realize that you have an accent? <laughs> I, I don't really realize that I have an accent. I guess I don't know. So we just sound weird. You think that I have an accent? You need to go to. Other parts of Kentucky, they're talking like this, man, or some of them, you don't even understand what they're saying. Okay? But <laughs> so see, I, see what you just did there, it sounded exactly the same as you're normally talking. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, friend, my friend DJ lives down in Kentucky, and that <laughs> talks like he's got a mouthful of marbles. He <laughs> down there can't understand what he's saying. He's like, hey, go on, go on, go on, go on. You're like, what the? <laughs> f That's not English, dude. There's there's people here that have words that I've never heard of. Uh, when I was in the state police academy, I was hanging out with the guys from Eastern Kentucky, and they would come around and be like, "That's dirtier than charn." I'm like, what's charn? You never heard of charn? I've you never, never heard, heard of charn. I've never heard. Never of heard of charn. My, my my grandma used to say that all the time. Really? I'd never heard that word. That's oh, yeah. I've never seen. She was beat, from uh, she was from West, she was from West Virginia. What what is it? I don't know. Charn? Oh, I don't know what it is? Charn means. Basically, <laughs> okay. Weird, weird, weird. Oh, don't squeeze the German. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. We've, we've got our thick accents around here in Western Kentucky too. I guess it just depends. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, we're talking to Scott from Kentucky, Kentucky ballistics. We're going to take a brief moment here from second call defense. Now for our defensive gun use of the week sponsored by second call defense. Offering you complete protection for armed self-defense. All right. So, you know, I, I do this week in guns uh, on the firearms radio network, and we always kind of talk about stories and stuff. I, I just recorded that previous to recording this, and there was all kinds of stories of self-defense. There was a mother who uh, pulled a gun on someone who was trying to kidnap her child, and the guy was immediately stopped and ran off. And I'm like, yeah, that's the kind of situation that you want, right? Where it's clearly, it, it's very clear who the aggressor was and who the, the victims were and, and all that. But it's the ones that have a little bit of doubt that kind of freak me out the most. You know, if, if everything doesn't go exactly how you want and there's witnesses and all this stuff, 
then it, it becomes a little bit tough. And if you get taken in for questioning and you say the wrong thing, or you're, you're just kind of overcome with emotion and adrenaline and all that stuff. And you say something that might put you, uh, in the hot seat, that that's the tough part, because even if you're never fully prosecuted, just having that doubt and having a district attorney look at your case and be like, yeah, you know, maybe there's something for a grand jury or maybe there's something to prosecute. It's terrifying. And second call defense, it's very low cost every single month, anywhere between 10 and 40 bucks a month, depending on the, the level that you get. But the second something happens, you call 911 and then you call second call defense. They make sure you have an attorney. They make sure that uh, that you are represented well. Uh, there's crime scene cleanup. There's uh, s- psychologists and counseling and all kinds of other stuff. They take care of criminal and civil defense and damages, and they do it all, uh, you know, knowing that us as armed civilians in the United States, we're the law abiding ones. We're the ones who are out there trying to do the best every day. And uh, they are they're there to protect us uh, for exercising our rights and just basically defending our own lives if we if we deem it necessary. So go check them out. Second call defense. Don't wait till it's too late. Get them today. This portion of We Like Shooting has been sponsored by Second Call Defense, the most comprehensive protection for armed self-defense in America. Visit welikeshooting.com slash SCD to find out how to get your first month free. All right, we're back with Scott from Kentucky Ballistics. Uh, Over in our live chat on YouTube, Jeff wants to know, if the TV show Justified is a, a good representation of Kentucky life? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. I always wanted the holler to be real. <laughs> All right. Well, there you, there you have it. I'm sorry for those that are disappointed, but no. Uh, Scott, what are, what are your favorite? Yeah, well, you, know, you don't live in Harlan County, do you? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was gonna say, yeah, it is a little different uh, on, that, on that end. I mean – that show is so good. It made me want to move to Kentucky just so I could be one of those guys. But then I realized that I'm a sissy and I'd get shot the first day. <laughs> so yeah, that's no good. Scott, what are your favorite guns? What are my favorite guns? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a, I'm a pistol guy. Um, I like uh, handguns a lot more than I do uh, what rifles. At least I shoot them more, but I love big bore stuff. I love 500 Magnum, 44 Magnum, 454 Casul. Uh, I just recently did a video with a 500 snub and I fell in love with that thing. It was awesome. Dang. I mean, what, what's the one that hurts the most to shoot? Uh, the Ruger super red Hawk Alaskan, uh, I think still hurts more than anything. What I don't, I like I'll shoot it, but it causes more pain than any other gun. Dang. At least, it used to. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. What uh what's what's your favorite rifle? Uh for what purpose? Mm, uh, just the most fun. Most fun? Um well just the AR fifteen, you know. I mean I have a lot of fun with that. I, I have a lot of fun target shooting though, too. I I love shooting uh siding in like a bolt action rifle, like that's a lot of fun. Nice. Um Love that. Uh, when you, when you, when did you start bringing in the 50 cal? When were you like, you know what? I'm going to dial this up a notch. Um, about a year ago, actually, no. Uh, yeah, it was about a year and a half ago. I bought that. <laughs> I bought that right after my daughter was born and my wife was about to kill me. She was like, what are you doing? We just had a baby. I was like, you don't understand. I, I have to buy this. I have to buy this rifle. Yeah, you're like Stretch Armstrong. He's taunting me, and <laughs> this has to happen. I was like, it's going to be worth it. I'm going to I'm going to buy the rifle. It's going to be worth it. And so, yeah, yeah. I went went ahead and, and got that. So yeah, about a year and a half ago. Dang, that's great. What um, what was the first? I'll, I'll tell you a story of mine about just like danger and this stuff. Because I mean, you're shooting fire extinguishers and anvils and. Stretch Armstrong, you never know what's going to happen. So yeah. one time I w- we were doing an event and there was a car and I was in a tent, maybe about 75 yards away. And they put an unspecified amount of Tannerite under the hood. And they were like, okay, now shoot the hood. And I was like, okay, I'll shoot the hood. So I shoot the hood and I'm under this tent and I kind of look up and I'm like, okay, cool. It blows up. And I was like, oh, ooh, ah. everyone's like, yeah, that's great. And then I kind of turned to look behind me. And then right as I'm about to turn to look behind me, 
a, a big, huge piece of the hood, probably two feet by three feet, literally a jagged shard lawn darts in the ground, like 10 feet in front of me. So I finally <laughs> see that. And then I turn around to look at everybody and everyone has like gone back like 50 yards, like running <laughs> in fear for their life. But no one thought, Hey, let's tell Sean, like no, no one ever, ever thought that it was a good to maybe yell or anything like that. So I almost died. And now I have a much healthier respect for shooting things. But was there ever a time where you were like, Holy moly, that was dangerous. Oh yeah. Like, um, like my second video, I've decided that I was going to blow up a dryer with a uh, five pounds of tannerite. Oh. So I cut a little window out in the door so I could see the tannerite. And I got back like maybe a hundred yards, may, not even that. I had no idea. And I didn't know how bad it was going to be. And I shot that. And it was the same thing that you had. I had pieces landing next to me. And after that, it was like, okay, if I ever do anything like this again, I need to get really far back. Like that could have been bad. Um, I've never really had any um, ricochets or anything like that. If I'm ever shooting anything that's a hard target and I know a ricochet can happen, I always try to cant it left or right or up or down so that most of the time where the bullet will ricochet down into the ground. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I try to get back at a decent distance. I haven't really recently with the fire extinguishers and stuff. I probably need to scoot back a little further (laughs) with those. But uh, other than that, um, I haven't, I've never really had any incidents like that. I always have a tourniquet with me just in case though. (laughs) Good call. Good call on that. So you you mentioned your wife a couple of times. She gave you a little bit of guff for the 50 cal, but what does she think about all this? And I mean, you even mentioned maybe, maybe, maybe at some point I'll go full time. Like what, what are her thoughts about all this? Uh, she thought I was uh, an idiot at first. I mean, it's like, hey, honey, I'm going to go out back and shoot this bowling ball and I'm going to film it. You know, <laughs> right. what are you doing? You know, other other guys on their days off, they're mowing the yard and doing things like that. And I'm out back destroying things with large handguns. <laughs> so uh, and then uh, now, you know, now that it's grown to over 220,000 subscribers, I kind of got a little bit of wait so now she loves it she, right it's great to see that it's uh she sees that it's um uh well worth it and sees the benefit L- from lucrative. it lucrative i don't know about that <laughs> not with all the youtube demonetizations maybe if uh i was doing something other than shooting guns but uh it's a lot of fun and uh i really enjoy it, it brings me happiness so you know she and and now she sees that other people like it too, and that it's okay. <laughs> she's she's a little more supportive. That's awesome. I mean, Savage can relate to this. Like, I think that his wife didn't realize until someone that she worked with was like, "Oh, wait, what? We like shooting? That's awesome." Yeah, uh, yeah. it was pretty. Even funny. now, she just barely tolerates it. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I took my wife on a uh, a date at the range. I know that sounds lame, but she wanted to go. She wanted me to go take her shooting, and uh, we were buying our targets and there was a guy behind the counter and he kept staring at me and I was thinking, <laughs> should I arrest this person? Or... <laughs> and then he comes over and he was, he's like, are you Kentucky ballistics? I was like, yeah. And she thought that was the, the coolest thing. That That is pretty great. What are your thoughts like on the gun industry? You're kind of, you're getting more into it now. You're going, um, shot show and NRA show and all the, all this stuff coming up for you. Like, as, as you get more into it, kind of what are your thoughts on the state of it? Um, it definitely seems like, I don't know, it may be hurting a little bit because I don't feel like people are buying as many guns as they used to. But I think that's because before we were all scared they were going away and mm-hmm. now maybe not so much. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, there's still definitely some fear with Trump and the bump stocks and kind of that just – bypassing the laws and the things that are important definitely adds a little bit to it, but I don't think we're scared either. I a hundred percent agree. Have you seen uh, any drama in the firearms industry yet? Uh, <laughs> like <no>. maybe today? <laughs> no, <laughs> like every day. <laughs> That's good. Uh, no, I really. I, I have a hard time keeping up with most things. I can barely remember what day it is. Um, much less, um, <laughs> what's going on with all that what's uh of all the videos you've done what was the biggest surprise that you had that you were like i did not expect that at all um 
Do you mean, what do you mean? Like the results or like yeah. views or uh, results results like shooting something? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Probably, probably the stretch Armstrongs when they, uh, stopping bullets. I didn't really expect that. <laughs> I did not and, either. And there's a lot of times I'll do ballistic gel tests and I won't, I won't, uh, expect what the results are. I'll expect one round to do a lot better than another one. And, it's just uh doesn't perform like I think it will, but um it honestly it's gotten to the point now where I can kind of gauge things pretty well. <laughs> like, ah, it's probably not gonna go through this. It's probably gonna go through this. Helps when it comes to filming and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we you know, we, we came across a couple things like that with the when we shot some clay. Uh the yeah. nine millimeter just like bore a hole right through it, but like the two two three just stopped and uh the other rounds that had bigger rounds just stopped. Or or um the bread. Yeah, we we've been doing a thing where it's how much bread is bulletproof, and for nine millimeter, it's four loaves. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, you would not expect that. We just use like fr- French bread from Walmart, and we can stop a bullet every single time, and the bullet stays in the bread, so we can just literally pick it out and then eat the bread. That's awesome. Yeah, it's just bread. <laughs> it's probably it not. is really good bread. I love French bread. <laughs> it's probably not dangerous at all. We're not going to get lead poisoning or anything. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Oh uh, gosh, it's so ridiculous. So, Scott, we've got this uh, NRA annual meetings coming up, and there's this big, huge event that is the Gun Collective uh, panel, which you are on this year. Yeah, you are too. <laughs> I, I, I am. Tell us, like, how'd that come about? Uh, I don't know. John just asked me if I wanted to be on it, and I said, yeah. I was thinking about going to the NRA anyways, just to meet fans and stuff. Uh, and so then him inviting me to be on the panel, I mean, that that pretty much is exactly what I want to do. So it's, it's going to be nothing but fans. So I'm super excited uh, to meet everybody. So there's like a photo booth and stuff. So yeah, there is. Uh, I think that's sure by Bowers Group, actually. <laughs> um, so they're they're doing the photo booth. I think it's, it's, it's going to be a blast. The panel, this will be my fourth year on the panel. Uh, it is awesome. I'll, I'll give you a preview of what the panel is. It'll be Military Arms Channel and 22 Plinkster. It would normally be Iraq Veteran 888 and Chad, but they won't be on it. So it'll be those two, like, answering stuff and, and getting serious questions. Every now and then, Mr. Guns and Gear will chime in with, like, some really, really eloquent response to something. And you're like, man, I really like that guy. And then it's just me making jokes. And, like, I don't know who it's going to be this year, but last year I picked on Johnny 182nd Ideas the entire time. <laughs> Like that, that was my entire job on the panel was just to pick on Johnny and make people laugh. So uh, I think, I think it's going to be tactical toolbox this year, but we'll see. Well, I'll just join in with you and just make fun of people. (laughs) Perfect. I like to, I like to sit to the outer sides, uh, you know, and let the really famous people sit in the middle. So I, I, (laughs) eventually I'll just be sitting in the audience. It'll be great. (laughs) Um, so I see that there's a video. So I've watched a lot of your videos. Uh, I subscribed maybe, I don't know, like a month and a half, two months ago, but how tough is a high point? It's got a picture of a chainsaw on a high point. How tough, <laughs> how tough is a high point? It's, it's pretty darn tough. Actually. <laughs> it surprised me. Uh, I just wanted to be completely ridiculous. That video I've seen everyone do the basic stuff when it comes to beating up a high point point. and don't get me wrong. Like with that video, the comments are flooded with, not everyone can afford a good gun and and I realize that, but I'm not gonna spend five hundred dollars to destroy a Glock when I could spend a hundred and thirty bucks to destroy a high point and they're really tough, so why not? <laughs> totally. So I just wanted to be completely ridiculous with that video. Uh and so yeah, I hit it with a chainsaw, I smacked it with a golf club, a sword. You know, what if uh <laughs> Someone comes at you with a sword, you pull out your high point and he whacks it out of your hands. It's still going to work. <laughs> That's great. And that thing was really tough. I mean, the only thing that stopped it was a sledgehammer on a Jeez. concrete block. So ridiculous. So we have an affinity for high points. And by we, I mean, pretty much me. Cause I'm like, yeah, they're awful, but they're also awesome. You know, uh, I actually spent a ridiculous amount of money on a compensated C9 high point. <laughs> I'm actually not proud of this. I spent way too much money, but you know, they're they came broken too. They're hard to get part. and it's broken, but we have a, a YouTube series that we do now. We've got two videos out on it right now, but it's like high point versus, so whatever the, the gun of the day is that we're reviewing, we put it up against the high point, but the high point always wins. And, uh, 
they're not getting any views at all. So I don't think people really like high points, but (laughs) (laughs) there's a bad business decision, but we're going with it. (laughs) What about ramen? I I saw this when I was kind of scrolling through the videos earlier and I was like, wait, ramen. How did that go? Yeah. I made a a ramen noodle body armor. And that was like, (laughs) I forget how many layers of ramen noodles that was, but I mean, it was out like, you know, it's, three foot off my chest. Like if you were wearing it, it'd be three foot off your chest. <laughs> yes. of ramen noodles. And I put it on a, a mannequin that I bought and it stopped a, uh, a nine millimeter stopped 45. Uh, it stopped. I feel like it stopped one other round. And then I shot it with a desert Eagle and that went through it. Um, and a compound bow went through it too, but <laughs> it was fun though. I, I forget. Oh, what spurred that was a uh, 50 BMG versus ramen noodles. Um, yes. And I decided to make body armor out of it and I actually went and donated a ton of ramen noodles to make up for the fact that I destroyed so much food. So <laughs> that's so great. Well, I always feel bad about that because we're constantly destroying stuff. I mean, not enough to the point where I'm actually going to go like donate something, but do you ever get any guff on that? Like destroying stuff and people are like, Oh man, that, yeah. that's lame. Yeah. I get that a lot. And surprisingly, the biggest one I get is water. People will comment and, I can't believe you're wasting water. I'm like, what can I shoot then? I, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I can't I believe. That's the weirdest thing to be like water. I, yeah. I, I did a, uh, how much water would it take to stop a 50 BMG? And I, I got a ton of those big uh, blue barrels. I, I had like five or six of them and I filled those up. It was a lot of water. And uh, I finally called someone out. They were, they were like, uh, people in Africa could use that water. And blah, blah. I said, I tell you what, if you pay for shipping, I will send all, a ton of water. <laughs> yes. I'm not paying for shipping. It's so dumb. Yeah. Yeah. How the f- are they going to get it? Like, yeah. Freeze dry it. Jesus. It's like the, like, the Sam, like it's like the Sam Kinison bit. Like it <laughs> came out of my well. oh, oh. <laughs> what was that, Scott? I said, it's like, it came out of my well. It's going to soak into the ground and go right back <laughs> into the water yeah. source. Like, it's okay. You know? Uh, oh, but yeah. Man. I get grief about, uh, shooting watermelons and stuff like that, but you know it's it's fun. So I mean, exactly. I spent my money. I spent my money on it. I can do with it what I want. You know. Yeah, that's the other thing. People don't realize how much freaking money it takes to make these YouTube videos. Like, I mean, just just the ballistic gel alone. Like, how much does a block of that cost to make? Uh, I think each block is a little over a hundred bucks. So. Ooh. No, we're not even talking. <laughs> hey, we haven't thrown out ammo yet, man. That shit is expensive. Yeah. Yeah, five five hundred Smith and Wesson Magnum, like for some good stuff from like Underwood Ammo, you're looking at over fifty dollars for twenty rounds. So, and <laughs> Jesus. 50, 50 BMG, uh, you're looking at four or five bucks a round. Especially armor piercing, armor piercing incendiary, like those are really pricey. Uh, all of it's extremely expensive. <laughs> yeah, and if you don't if you don't get a lot of views, you're not making that money back anytime soon. <laughs> Yeah, I would say that's probably one of the most um, discouraging things is when you're you're putting forth that much effort and you're putting forth that much money to make uh, content and then it gets shut down and you're not getting views. Like it's that's sad. Yeah. Well, the worst part too is like you're not getting paid for that, but YouTube's still making money. They're still selling yep. ad space on you. They're, you just don't get to see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have noticed that. You'll see a for me, it'll say a video is demonetized. But then a friend of mine or my wife or somebody will watch the video and be like, there's still ads on it. So yep. it doesn't really make sense. Who the f*** is watching YouTube without a goddamn ad blocker? Uh, apparently his friends and his <laughs> wife. Yeah. Apparently people in Kentucky, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen an ad on YouTube in a decade. Well, I think – thanks for your support, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real – I don't there, give a but- – <laughs> I actually I can't uh, because some of their tools don't work in the YouTube studio, so I I have to have ads on on YouTube. And I watch a lot of YouTube on my phone, like when I'm driving and stuff. Uh, so that's safe. I, no, I mean like I have it on, and I I, I put it directly in front of my face. <laughs> I put it directly in front of my face in the windshield so that I don't miss anything. <laughs> but yeah, it's fine. Um, and yeah. I guess. Oh, I know why I don't have any ads because I've got YouTube Red or whatever it is. That makes okay. sense. Yeah. So I pay for Man. YouTube every month. Ching. Yeah. Exactly. You're welcome. Money. 
No, I do that through the I, WLS account. I don't, I don't, I don't watch anything on YouTube that involves guns. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, where do you think the industry's going, Scott? I have no clue. <laughs> All right, me either. Me either. <laughs> where would you like to see it go? Uh, of course, I'd like to see it grow, keep getting bigger, have more people that are interested in guns, keep getting into guns. Yeah, you know, I, really, I think right now, I mean, is the best time for firearms with social media and everything. I mean, you have access to so much now. When before, I mean, it's like you'd see guns. If your grand, if your grandpa had guns or something, like that's it. Now it's it's everywhere, you know. There's so much information and people like me out there just shooting Stretch Armstrong. So there's everything out there. So love it. Do you have any big plans for the I don't know the coming year of videos or just stuff you really want to do? Uh, you don't have to tell yeah, us because I, I I've, got, I've got some stuff, but I, I'm not going to say. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> tomorrow would be like we like shooting. Does this? <laughs> uh, it's. Okay, well, it didn't work that time. But hey, uh, like website, and uh, I've seen some some other stuff going on. What do you got going on there? Oh, we- oh yeah. Um, pretty soon, I'm going to be uh, opening my new uh, website. I'm going to be uh, have more shirts and stuff for sale. A lot of people have been requesting shirts. I work with uh, the Tilva Hollow Project out of Florida, mm-hmm. and they are a really cool group of guys. They um, take all their profits, and they use that towards – um, providing plaques for fallen soldiers and first responders. And they make those plaques and they give them to their families uh, free of cost, which is really cool. And so like when people buy one of my shirts, since I'm partnered with them, some of that money goes to help support that cause. And it's my website hasn't really been the easiest to navigate through. So now we're about to launch a new website, have new shirt designs and all kinds of cool stuff like tumblers and just everything. So I'm super excited about that. That is so cool, man. And uh, do you have the website up like right now? Just not, not launched. Yeah. It's, it's just not launched yet. Okay. Uh, hopefully I'll launch it in the next week. Okay, cool. So this show will come out, well, I guess tomorrow. So I guess it doesn't do us any good, but just go look on his YouTube channel. I'm sure you're going to do like a video or a post or something like that. Right. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to let everybody know about it. All right. Awesome. And people can find you YouTube, uh, Kentucky ballistics, Facebook, Kentucky ballistics, all that yes. good stuff as well. Right. It's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, more than anything. That's where everything's going down. So that's great. So you're going to stick around with us for a bit, right? Yeah. All right. You're now a panelist. You can say whatever you want. You don't have to even put any thought into it because we don't. So it's uh, <laughs> not a big deal at all. But man, it's, a, it's absolutely awesome. I promise you guys out there, if you go subscribe, you will enjoy the videos. I subscribe. I've watched every single video that's come out since I've subscribed and uh, definitely enjoying them a lot. I appreciate it. All right. So guys, it is time to talk about giveaways. And that comes to us from the Patriot Patch Company. So first off, we've got five giveaways going on right now. We've got Patriot Patch Company Mega Monthly Giveaway. Ken Oz Tactical Group gives away a class. Black Rhino Concealment gives away a holster. Stuck Not Custom gives away $50 to anything on their website. And Blue Alpha Gear gives away a belt every single month. You can go enter to win at welikeshooting.com slash giveaway. And Patriot Patch Company sponsors this segment patriotpatch.co coupon code WLS WLS gives you 10% off all day, every day. Aaron, we've got winners coming up uh, a couple weeks. Yeah. Are we going to be in town for that? Uh, ish. Yeah. So yeah. you know what? It's paying my ass to do that. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay. Perfect. <laughs> but thanks to Patriot patch company. All right, so we've got this other show called Double Tap, and it's on every Wednesday, except this week it was on Tuesday, but it comes out Saturday. It's so confusing, but just go listen to it. We like shooting.com slash show. You can subscribe to everything all right there. What did we talk about in Not Guns last week or yesterday? Uh, currency and what we would use in prison for currency, and it was your butthole. <laughs> <That's... laughs> all right, no, never mind. I... So go check out. The... <laughs> no, wait, no, seriously. We talked about what we'd all be good at and bad at as in regards to teaching. No. I thought we talked about gold. That was two weeks ago. Oh, I, well, update the show notes. Well, no, we did a show yesterday that you're referring to, but normally this show would be before Double Tap. So he's talking about last week's in which you're wrong, Aaron. Yeah, exactly. So it was last week's. Gold. Mm-hmm. Was it? 
I believe so. We well, we talked about what currency we we would use <laughs> if we didn't have money. And if again, it came down to your. Brain. All right, that'll do. <laughs> Listen, so you don't to want to go no. back there, do you? You okay? have you no. You have to say sweet, sweet. <laughs> oh, okay, that's enough. <laughs> Go listen to our other show, Double Tap, and oh. you can hear that conversation, which I'm super, super excited about. But uh, let's talk about some guns and some gear and all that other stuff. Uh, hold on. I got to find the right stuff because everything's changing. So Gear Chat is now brought to you by Fax and Firearms, and you can go to their website, faxandfirearms.com, and you can find out all the cool stuff that they're doing. Uh, whether it's barrels, whether it, I mean, so much awesome stuff. They've got the, the hellfire and the Patriot slides for MMPs. They now have their, uh, new pistol lines that they've come out with the Patriot and hellfire models of those. And those will be coming out actually very soon. I hope, uh, hopefully by NRA, if not right after, uh, the new facts and firearms handguns will, will come out, but all kinds of stuff, whether you need a gas block, a bolt carrier group, barrel, uh, muzzle device, uh, the A-Rack, it's all available. Factsandfirearms.com. Coupon code is WLS10. Gives you 10% off all day, every day. Savage, what's your product? Well, uh, I kind of want to show my solidarity solidarity for our friends in California this week. Uh, I'll be covering that a little bit more in the uh, news segment. But uh, an interesting magazine got posted uh, on, of all places, of course, Reddit and I got Call it here. Me shocked. I know, <laughs> I know, right? This guy's never shocked. So if you if you can see my magazine here, it is uh, basically Judge Roger Benitez, who is the judge that ruled in the plaintiff's favor in California that struck down the magazine ban. And so where I got this from is uh, mysoutherntactical.com. And if you go over to their website, they have a ton of awesome and also hilarious magazine designs. They've got the ATF agent peeking out from behind the wall. They've got a box of crayons for Jeremy. They've got the no step on snake. They've got a whole bunch of stuff that's based on memes and, uh, you know, all kinds of different interesting designs. And of, of course this one here, and, uh, they're not exactly cheap. Uh, I think this one at the time was going for about 25 to 35 bucks the average magazine you'll see on there is 35 bucks, but the quality of these prints is really good. Um, I, I've tried scratching this thing, and it's it's like the image is imprinted inside the magazine. Um, is it laser so, engraved? I don't know. It, I mean, they they all look like they have some kind of paint on it. I mean, they, they have different colors and stuff, so I couldn't tell you if it was laser engraved or not. Um, but it's really good. It's good quality, and it's a PMAG, so you can't really go wrong. So... If you want a custom PMAC and you can even design your own for $50, uh, you can head on over to mysoutherntactical.com and they will hook you up, yo. So, Savage, I don't mean to nitpick here, but in order to show your solidarity for Californians that could, for the first time in a very, very long time, buy magazines that were standard capacity, you bought up some of the stock of magazines that could have gone to Californians. Is that? I, is bought, that exact, I bought exactly one, and yes – this one is all sold out at this point, so I don't know when they're going to have the next bunch available. So I want to get at least one, just one. That's all I want, just one. I actually tried to order some uh, purple Lancer mags that they put out for California, but my it was declined because I live in Colorado. Oh, they must have gotten to that point, yeah. yeah <laughs> they just... were declining sales to everybody else except for me. No, it's because I can't have 30-round mags in Colorado. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, and then I was like, oh, California's got more freedom than I do. <laughs> well, for five whole days, they did. No, those are pretty cool. What was the name of the place again? That would be mysoutherntactical.com. Uh, Scott, <laughs> are you going to have Kentucky Ballistics uh, magazines on the website? Uh, no, that's a good idea, though. <laughs> With just your face on it. I'll, I'll buy one. Just me or like uh, I have the T-Rex on there. <laughs> yes, that would yeah. be amazing. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. So for the people who don't know, well, I guess this isn't even gear. I'll talk about that next. But. So I got a couple things in over the last couple of days. We were we're doing lots of videos now and we go to the range often and we were having trouble seeing our targets like at longer ranges. So I was like, ah, I need I I guess it's finally time that I need a spotting scope. So I put out a call and uh, ended up getting a sight mark latitude spotting scope in and a phone scope attachment and all the good stuff. Actually phone scope sent a battery and a remote shutter and uh, attachments for two of my phones and all kinds of other stuff. But 
I think this is awesome. So when I was first looking at the spotting scope, this thing is affordable first off, but he was showing me actual targets, pictures taken through that same spotting scope that I got at two miles and you could actually see it and it's good. It's a 20 to 80. It's the latitude model and it's pretty badass. But my question to you guys is what spotting scopes do y'all use? And Scott, do you, do you have a spotting scope? Do you use one? What do you like? I do have one. I don't think I have used enough of them to have a favorite. I have one that was given to me as a gift. It's made by, uh, what is their name? Uh, Redfield. Oh yeah. It's a Redfield spotting scope. Yeah. And I've only used it to, I'll use it to side in a rifle, but I've never, I don't think it really compares to the one you have <laughs> taking pictures at two miles away. Yeah. It was, it was like surprisingly good. I was like, well, I mean, I can literally see the target. I mean, clearly it's not filling the entire frame, but I think that was pretty suitable. Jeremy, do you have a spotting scope? What do you use? The scope on the rifle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I only shoot at 10 X. So no, I'm just kidding. This one goes to, so I think my max rifle optic is maybe 24 and this one is 20 to 80. So clearly does a lot more savage. You use your ATN, right? Uh, I can use my ATN. The thing is, <laughs> Uh, the only downside about the ATN is it's a it's a fixed optically it's a fixed like three to four power scope. Digitally, it can zoom in farther than that. But when you're zooming in digitally, you're literally just blowing up the picture. You're not getting a clearer picture. Mm-hmm. So if you're at you know, enhance. Even- yeah, even at twenty five, <laughs> even at twenty five yards, you're not seeing the holes from a five five six or you know two twenty two caliber uh, rifle. Um, so generally, I I just walk down to the target <laughs> and see where I'm hitting. So I mean, like I have binoculars and I have a spotting scope that just it's awful. It was a gift like several years ago, and I'm like, that's so bad. And I'm sorry if whoever bought that for me hears that, but yeah, you're, you're, yeah, thanks, dude. No, it wasn't you. <laughs> I can take the credit. They don't know. It was, it was, it's pretty bad. So I'm pretty excited about this one. I actually set it up. It's, it's sitting right there looking out the office window. I was like, okay, this isn't creepy at all. So I'm going to turn the lights off and look at it later. <laughs> uh, but I was just like looking and I was able to zoom in that I couldn't even figure. So I, I zoomed in on a house and I was looking at a pipe on their roof. And yeah. I, could, I couldn't yeah. even, see, right. <laughs> I was looking at the roof. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is, is peeping illegal? Uh, never. <laughs> so I, I focused on a pipe on the roof and I couldn't even pick it out with my naked eye, like where exactly it was. So the thing works pretty great and being able to have that phone scope and, uh, that, that kind of that attachment makes it even so much easier. So I'll be reporting back on all well, that. I, I have two things to say to your whole statement there. What? Uh, so I shoot alone a lot and, uh, I don't, Sometimes if you miss the paper, you won't know where your point of impact is yeah. if you miss it. But with the, so it's great if you have someone sitting on the spotting scope looking, but you know, for me, it's like if I shoot it and, and my, my scope was, uh, is the one I'm, I was actually setting a scope in today. And, um, it was, uh, you know, six by 24 by 50 and I could see the holes from the paper. But you know, if I, if I didn't realize where the hole was or if like, Oh, did I make that one? Or is that a previous hole? So yeah, spotting scopes are cool. But they're cooler when you have a friend, and I don't have any friends. Well, no, um, and don't forget, because I have the phone scope attachment, I can literally just use my cell phone and hit video and then just go back and look at the video and see where I hit. Well, that was my second thing was, that's awesome. Um, now, does does uh, did it come for that, that particular uh, this spotting scope, or did you buy that separately or get that separately? Uh, it, it was sold separately. So Sightmark is the company that does the spotting scope and phone scope. P H O N E S K O P E. They're the ones who sent out the attachments. So it's a universal attachment, but then it fits specific phones. So I got them for the Google Pixel, which is our range phone that we use, and then the Google Pixel Two, which is my phone. So I I got cases for both, so that we can use either one. Nice. Yeah. Uh, with the spotting scopes, like a lot of people use them for their rifles, but I actually used my spotting scope a lot for uh, getting better with pistol. At like twenty five yards, because you can't see the paper. Yeah. So instead of setting up then different you, targets, then, you, then use a different target that'll actually show the bullet hole. <laughs> yeah, you could use that, or just use a paper target and mark it with a permanent marker. But regardless, or maybe you got bad eyes. I don't know. Yeah. But I take a few shots, and then you look through the spotting scope, you see where you're hitting. You can, and you can determine, you know, are you jerking the trigger? Are you flinching? Are you 
using too much finger on the trigger, whatever. And you can dial in your shooting better with a pistol at long distance too. Yeah, that's awesome. So speaking of long distance pistol shooting, like I've watched a couple of videos where you did it, that, that, that it's not easy. What, what do you think? Uh, clearly you, you use the spotting scope to kind of help you dial that in, but any other tips for people who want to do it? I think the biggest problem that people have is just, uh, not being confident enough in themselves pulling the trigger. I think if you just go over there and you just keep the front sight, try and keep it in between the middle of your targets there. I mean, if you got two sticks down there with a paper target on it, just try your best to keep it there and focus on your trigger squeeze. That's the main thing is your trigger squeeze. Yeah. People and, flinching. Uh, thank you, Sean. Sure. You're my main squeeze. <laughs> huh. Uh-uh. Ah. <laughs> But yeah, so that spotting scope for people who are wondering, the one that I have is six ninety nine ninety seven, and I was actually looking at some really high dollar ones, like fifteen hundred, two thousand, three thousand dollars, and I was like, nope, I, I do not see myself ever spending that much. But this, I could understand, and and as I use it more, I think it'll probably even demonstrate its value even more. Uh, and then all the stuff that I got from phone scope was about two hundred bucks, but that's not mandatory. That was just a bunch of extras. Really, I think it's forty nine. 49 bucks for uh, your phone case and the adapter for whatever spotting scope you have. That's so awesome. Yeah. Pretty cool stuff. Aaron, you didn't put anything in gear chat. Well, you know, uh, I've spent, so I cleaned out my garage. I found a lot of uh, gun cases. I forgot I had nice. Yeah. uh, I, so I built, so I was so inspired by the new uh, rubber dummies platform where it's uh, the wood, the wooden platform that you can put it on now. Yeah. That I built one of those out of a uh, old, you know, I have a, a double thing where you put plywood in the sides. It's a metal frame, and you can put a target in between. Well, I built that into a rubber dummy stand. That was pretty cool. Uh, I sighted in a rifle. I'm going to talk more about that in lifestyles. But yeah, I, I, uh, I, you know, it's hard for me to talk about a lot of the new stuff because it's like uh, I've been so busy doing other stuff. Cool. Sorry. No, no, I get it. Uh, today we released a video about the. Smith and Wesson MMP sh- th- Shield 380 uh, no 380 Shield Easy M 2.0 and I got to say I love that thing <laughs> I, I don't like the name <laughs> but I love the the gun you can go check that out uh, we released that today yesterday we released a video man does anyone remember I don't remember no but what's up with that naming convention dude uh, that one and also the uh, Rock Island Armory TCM the Rock Island yeah. Armory Rock Standard TCM MSHC <laughs> Ultra 22 TCM 9 millimeter. Like, come on, guys. Like, Faxon's got got it going on. It's the Patriot and the Hellfire. Right. Yeah. It's like these guys are sitting around the table and everyone gets an input. Like, okay, everyone get, everyone gets to add one name. Okay. Okay. I, I call them 9 millimeter, you know. Exactly. TCM. Shut, what the f-? You know. It's so it's, annoying. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we've been putting out a lot. We put out the painting video recently, painting with guns. Those paintings turned out so well. Honest to God, those are some really nice paintings. <laughs> I know. I can't wait. We're going to like give them away or auction. Uh, we're going to give some away, auction some off, whatever. So we're going <laughs> to give them away to Patreons. So if you're a Patreon, go check that out. If not, um, well, I don't really know what to tell you. Oh, yesterday we did High Point versus 300 Blackout. Uh, Monday we did the Riddle of Steel where we shot a sword. That one was actually really interesting. Yeah. I, like I mean, that. I, yeah, I was really impressed that you guys were able to hit the blade at side of a sword at uh, what was the distance? Uh, I don't know. We were like probably thirty feet or more. Okay, so ten yards, which is really good, man. I mean, that's actually, I, hit a, I, hit, I hit a champagne cork with a handgun at that distance. Yeah, it, it really wasn't actually even that hard. I think I missed a couple with one of the nine millimeter carbines, but otherwise, it was mostly one or two shots, and we were good. Well, see, the, according to the editing, you guys got it on the first try every time. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> clearly. Uh, clearly. But, yeah, then we did that thumb thumb fired AR from Iron Horse Firearms. We made pizza with the Rock Island Armory 22 TCN. We painted with bullets. I talked about my Polymer 80. There's all kinds of stuff going on. We like – or I'm sorry, YouTube.com slash we like shooting. And I think that's it for gear ch- – oh, no, I, I didn't even go to our guest – what is uh, the thing that you've been most excited that you recently acquired, Scott? Uh, it's not gear, though. It used to be a gun, which yeah. was that 500 snub nose. I was super excited about that. 
I think it looks pretty cool. I was looking at the thumbnails after you mentioned the video and I was like, dang. Yeah, it's probably one of it's probably my new favorite gun. <laughs> Things awesome. What did it take the place of as your favorite? Uh my four fifty four snub nose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got a thing for the snub nose? Yeah, I like them. <laughs> That's so they're cool. just they're ridiculous. They're just absolutely ridiculous. They're so much fun to shoot. I mean, I'm not trying to like brown nose or anything, but whenever Demolition Ranch shoots like a really high powered revolver, he makes like a big deal out of it. But but you don't. You just shoot it and you're like, yeah, that that it was fine. I'm good. I think it's to each his own. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, some people. I think it legitimately hurts some people to shoot that thing. Like it's the recoil is no joke. I mean, <laughs> definitely. Like I put a 700 grain hard cast in that thing and <sighs> it's ridiculous. But I mean, I just have fun doing it. I don't know. <laughs> Oh man, I want to shoot that or I want to shoot something like that. <laughs> Sounds fun. Uh guys, it's time for lifestyle. So yes, Brownells. Uh, I just got in a Brownells shipment. I've, so the thing I've ordered the most from Brownells, I've ordered four of them in the last two months, are their optic mounts. They're 30 millimeter AR optic mounts. I've gotten four of them just because I have a bunch of rifles that need optics and I had some optics that needed rings and they're inexpensive. So far, they're working fantastically. And uh, yeah. I use those, man. I love those. Those are great. Yeah. Uh, I'm really liking them. Yeah, I really like them more than you like them. Mm, I like the party. I think I like them more, way more than you do. Look, it's a look. It says your name behind you. Oh, could you see that? No, it said big. <laughs> 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 oh, ballers! I'm sorry. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So anyway, go ch- go check out Brownells. Check out their clearance. Check out their Edge program. Check out everything. Uh, they they have been big supporters of WLS, and we love them. And I use them constantly for just when I forget a part. I bought several of my last guns through them. Uh, yeah, brownells.com. Aaron, what do you want to talk about? I sighted in a rifle today. And God, dude, I hate it. I hate sighting in rifles. Dude, it's so, it's so easy. It's so easy. Well, uh, there's a lot of math involved. <laughs> no, there's not. For, well, Aaron, why, 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 tell, why? tell us the situation first. Tell us why it was difficult. Uh, Well... So, okay, uh, I'm sighting in my 6.9 or uh, 6.5 Creedmoor. And uh, so I, I wasn't sure where I was, I was my, my ammo was dropping. Was it low? Was it high? I, I don't know. It's not hitting the paper at 100 yards. So I say, okay, this is a hundred. It's a, it's a dollar to shoot. Each time I pull the trigger, it costs me a dollar. So I'm going to use my laser bore sight and lay it out there. But Obviously, laser bore sights don't go to 100 yards, right? That sucked. So uh, I set up a secondary target at 50 yards and, uh, you know, got it, got it lined up straight, but it was shooting low. So I adjusted higher, go out to 100 yards, and now I'm finding that it's shooting a little bit to the right. And it's one mil per, per click. Um, so no, it's I one, one, eight, one eighth per click. <laughs> Whoa. No, it's a one, one tenth per click on one mine. Tenth? Really? Yeah. That's not what yeah. you told us in Slack. No, it's one tenth per click. Oh, okay. So it's uh, so I have to turn it. So it's about three. It's nine inches shooting nine inches right. Wow. Which is yeah. So I I you know I move it two two point five over. Well, how many gives, mills is it shooting? How many mills? If your if your if your turret is in mills. Yes. Give me give me numbers in mills. Don't give me it in inches. That's why you're doing too much math. All right, so it's shooting nine inches over. Don't say so that. Don't three po- so it's, it's three point. Play. So each each full each full uh, mill each uh, each ten, you know each full uh, one to two is three point six inches. So that means I have to move it over two point. I went two point five, and it got me closer. Uh, you know, and I I was basically. And it, and it basically where my I was dropping it was about two inches off of, of my actual crosshairs at 100 yards, which isn't bad, you know. Um, 
but it wasn't where I want to be. And, uh, you know, it, it cost me about 20 bucks worth of shooting today to, to try to walk it on, on, on onto that, uh, the perfect zero for me. Does your scope, does your scope have mill dots in it? Yeah. Okay. So if you put your crosshairs on the bullseye. Yes. And you can see where your bullet impact was. Right. You can just count the mills. You don't have to count inches. You can just literally look in your f-ing scope and go, oh, look at that. It's two and a half mils off. It's one one click is a tenth. So womp, 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 25 f-ing clicks. Boom, you're on. How f-ing hard is that? Jeremy has a point. He's not wrong, you know. Well, it, it's, but it's, it's, uh, uh, how do I say this? It's, it's not exactly right, but it's not wrong either. That's exactly right. It's literally no. exactly right. Yeah, well, that, that he's right. Okay, so here, here's the thing. Is, I mean, you want to you know, sure. know a really fun way to sight in a gun with one shot? Yeah. Go ahead. Knock me out. One f-ing round you can sight a rifle in. Okay. Yeah, if you have it mounted and, and you can just shoot it. Right. Put it yeah, no, it, get, it, get it to where you're, you have no human input. Shoot it. Put it in the bullseye and then just turn the f-ing turret till the crosshairs get to the bullet. Boom, your rifle sighted in. One dollar, Bob. But the problem is, it's not like I have a, a cement block I'm shooting off of. But I mean, there's a way. I'm that's, sure that's the you problem. If you had sandbags or towels, <laughs> blanket, old blankets or know, something, but... you could do it. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong, but you, you've you're probably through... wrong. <laughs> Go ahead, Aaron. When, when you look through your optic, you're, you're lined up, right? You're all squared uh, away. Yeah. And you move your head just a little bit to the right or left. You still can see that everything's perfect, but now your target's off. Yeah, parallax. Yeah, right. you're literally talking about parallax. So, yeah, but I mean, oh, my point is... down the I, center of the f-ing scope, and you won't have that. <laughs> so, Jeremy, I understand that this is simple for you, but I mean, if... if no, it's just simple. If Aaron has these questions, then it's it's likely that a listener has the same question. So, you're, I hope not. you're like, you're like a 10. Why don't you come down like 20%, bud? All I'm saying is it's not that... Listen... No, you overcomplicated it. I may have overcomplicated it because I want to do it right, and I'm trying to figure this shit out because I've never had to do it before. I mean, yeah, I zeroed it in by usually, you know, with less expensive rounds. Like, you know, I can walk it in. I can, you know, but this is it gets kind of pricey when you start going with the uh, the higher end rounds, and it's kind of frustrating. My favorite thing on the range is when people bring, you know, so I have a 25 yard indoor range, right? Mm-hmm. And they'll have a quarter or eighth click. At a hundred yards, but they're shooting at twenty five yards, and they're uh, at, but they're and so they'll be shooting low, and they'll go like click click click. It didn't move at all. <laughs> yeah, click click click. I'm like, oh my god, spin that b- like a top. Right. So and, uh, you know, and I'm shooting at. Um, I don't have so my paper target that's out there is just spray painted on. It's like a big spray painted X. So it's not like a little dot that I can actually just put my reticle on each time because it's a you know it's a, it's a, it's not like an even line. So yeah, it's it's just fr- it's frustrating. So Aaron, if you're gonna do, if you're gonna do that, Aaron, aim for the bottom or top or an edge of the circle instead of the center of it. <laughs> All right. So Aaron, do you have a good idea of how to do it better? I do. I do. I, so I mean. Yes, I have a better idea. But the problem is, too, is, uh, you know, the parallax issue. You know, I I can rest my head on the, on my uh, my gun each time. Um, But now I have to move my – now I have to move to readjust my scope. I guess you can count it out. Yeah, I guess. Because what I'm Sorry. trying to do so – have, have, have you ever used an aperture sight? An aperture like on an M16? No, I have so not. A no. rear sight? No. You've never used that. You've never shot like a A2 with an iron sight. No. Like flip up irons on a AR. Really? No, I, 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 I have literally never shot irons on an AR. I have irons on an AR, but I never have to because I have optics on all my Okay, AR. have you ever looked down the sights of the irons on an AR? Yes. Okay, that's an aperture sight. It's okay. a rear aperture and a front post. <laughs> okay. You have to center the front post in that rear aperture, right? But you have to just do it. You have to eye it. Yeah. It's just, you just have to eye it. You just have to center it in there and go, that looks about right. Boom. And you have to do it the same way every time you do it to be accurate. When yeah. you look down a scope, it's the same thing. 
you have to look down the center of the scope and you'll get it like that little you ever see like the black ring around yeah, what yeah you, no, you, you see the black ring everything's well <laughs> but you can actually use that to a point if it's like real small around the outside to center yourself down the scope so you're not not getting parallax by looking through one side or high or low yeah. You see what I'm saying? I totally, I totally understand what you're saying. Yes. Are, okay. you, are you laying down or are you like sitting on a bench or what? Uh, I'm, I'm sitting on a bench. Are you like leaning on the bench at all or? Yeah. I mean, well, well, no, what I'm doing is uh, I'm taking the rifle. I'm holding it this way. I'm using my new grip. And I, so the front, so the um, uh, tripod's, the, on the table. Yeah, tripod's on the table and the back end's not resting on it except my shoulder. Okay. I was going to say, your breathing can affect that too. Yeah, and I was totally taking my breathing into account on the whole thing. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm, it's getting better. It's just it's just a matter of more practice, and apparently I need a lot more money to keep shooting this rifle. <laughs> no, I mean, so Jeremy's idea of the, the one shot, that is literally the best ever. Like, Right, and I had, and I had, a, I had my sled out there, right? Yeah, I, I was going to say, you have one. I, I had it bolted down to my sled and pulled the trigger, um, but I still have issues with it because of the parallax. Have you ever bore sighted it without a laser? Uh, it's no, it's a. Uh, you you want to know? You want to know a cheap way to bore sight a rifle, at least a bolt action or an AR? Take I out have the a bolt. bolt. So talk about okay. Take take the f- bolt out of it. Set it up on the counter or something. Look down the barrel. Yeah. Again, centered down the barrel. Find the neighbor's mailbox or something about a hundred yards away. A gas line. Not without touching it. Yeah, a gas line. <laughs> Look down it. Oh, there's a pretty birdhouse two doors up the road. Look through the scope. Click, 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 click. Crosshairs are on the birdhouse. My rifle sighted in. Close. Well, damn close. Yeah. It'll be damn close. Uh, Scott, how do you zero? What's your What's your method? I'm old school. I just go with how they taught me in the uh, academy, which is three shots, adjust, three shots, adjust. I never did, they do the teach one. Gross? did they teach gross sight adjustment? What's that? Like, don't be a about changing your sights. Crank the f-ing wheel. Well, that's just kind of me in general. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> I don't really count. I'll just rant and then shoot and like, uh, okay, maybe this way now. And I, most of the time I can get it sighted in fairly quickly. Uh, just kind of guessing with the clicks. Once I start trying to dial it in like really close, I'll actually count my clicks, but just getting it on paper, I'm just, just cranking it. So try, try the one sight shot with one shot sight. in. it's awesome. It, it right. is. Awesome. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. I've heard about that. I just never really done it. Honestly, I have fun sighting it in. So I kind of like doing the three shots and adjusting because I get to shoot more. And True. the best way, and look, if I had a hex paper, that would have been great. You know, with the little inch, one inch squares on it. That would have been that would have been key, but I didn't have that. That is literally not going to help you when your scope is set up in mills. So I, I had a funny story the other day. Uh, we were at the range, and I needed to sight in a rifle because I just put the optic on, and you know we're there with the cameraman, and Nick and I are there, and like we're definitely under a time crunch. We only have a day, and we've got to record like seven videos. And uh, I was just trying to zero this thing in. I, I, I kind of felt like Aaron here. I was like, it would not zero. I was like, where the f- am I? I cannot figure out what's going on. And as I reached up to turn one of the turrets, it, I noticed the scope wobble in the wind. It wasn't, mount, it wasn't mounted to the rail correctly. So. Uh, <laughs> I did that with three thirty eight Lapua. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So I, I spent some money uh, on ammo and then um, realized that's, that that's three bucks a shot. Yeah. Well, try six. Oh, six geez. And then after that, I I thought I had it sighted in. I couldn't understand why I'm holding, and each time it's my group is moving. The group is tight, but it's moving, and it's because I should have uh, put some lock tight on that rail. And I got roasted in the video for that because I posted that video, and people were like, "You always put lock tight on your rails before you sighted in." I'm like, "Well, I didn't." So <laughs> exactly. I That's not true. It. There's actually some scope manufacturers out there that say you'll void their warranty if you put Loctite on their screws. Really? If they're if it's good scope rings. So well, this just this was the whole rail on the gun, like from the factory. It was just loose. Oh, so, that sucks. That's yeah. that's so, an expensive quite thing. A bit of money on that video. Yep. <laughs> so okay. All right. I was hand loading 300 Win Mag and hot loaded it so much 
that I shot the ejector into the bolt and it stuck. Oh Jesus! Uh, it was actually pushing the 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 head stamp into the ejector hole, like there was like a round hole. Um, mm. It it crushed the rim to the point where it wouldn't fit in a shell holder on a reloader, and it knocked my scope loose through the f-ing rings. Jeez. Oh. That's yeah. What the f- wrong with you, man. 70, 70, 72 grains of reloader, twenty two behind a two hundred and ten grain uh, Nosler AccuBond. I don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> Dang! I want to see him saying that with an eye patch. <laughs> teeth. <Do it. laughs> I, 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 I did. The, I, I did the math, and it was somewhere like it was like eighty eighty five thousand psi. Oh like that. Jesus. <laughs> that's that's just dangerous. Okay, so uh lock tight your screws if it doesn't void your warranty. Have a very stable bench and platform so you can do it. Use Jeremy's one shot and then uh poetry on a cracker in the live chat said and Aaron call eight one one. Yes. Nice. And also check out Brown L's. Uh let's see. Hey, hey Ron, what yes. you gonna do now? <laughs> And Aaron, go buy a scope if the turret is in minutes and the reticle is in mil. That is annoying. That is annoying. Why do people? Why do some companies do that? I, I don't know. I Does have I better? have a scope like that, and I f-ing hate. Wasn't it. it the one on your Savage? What? No, that's no, that's my Vortex. Okay, that's uh, that one's minute, I, and I prefer minutes over mils. Um, it's just easier for me to do the math in my head. Yeah. Um, and. Because I always want to convert mills into minutes, so I just cut the middleman out and stick with minutes. Um, but no, it was an old scope on, on the first AR I ever built. It was like a Nikon Bushmaster. Like, I ran out of money and had to get a cheap scope. Um, right now, it's got an ATN uh, night vision, 5 to 12 power. <laughs> oh, you got to like that then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, the turrets were in minutes and the reticles in mill dot. And I'm like, this is stupid. Nice. All right. Next segment. From sea to shining sea, America gets its news from one source. Who gets his source? Oh, you know what, Aaron? I'll stop it for you. What were you going to say? I was going to say, so I put that uh, um, laser bore sight in, and I was shining on the wall in the house just to see, you know, try to get lined up straight. Yeah. And this thing is so zoomed in that the laser's like this big. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they hurt your eye. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. I, 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 since Jeremy like s- scream taught you, I wanted to give you the last word. Thanks, man. It, was, <laughs> it made me sad. Here we go. <laughs> off. From sea to shining sea, America gets its news from one source. Who gets his source from other sources? It's time for Going Ballistic with Savage What R. All right, so this is going ballistic. Savage one arm. Uh, I'm gonna let you finish, but before I <laughs> do that, I wanted to start off and say that Adam Crowd announced today that he did not get elected to the NRA Board of Directors. <sighs> and I talked to him earlier today and uh, just you know talked about that and some other stuff. But yeah, uh, it's tough. <laughs> one yeah. other thing in particular. Uh, no, that too. But it's tough, man. Like uh, Adam is a good dude. I, I fully believe Adam uh, had the best of intentions on getting on the board. Um, I, I do consider him a friend, and I've talked to him many, many, many times about this in person and online. Um, I really think he wanted to do the right thing. I think without question in my mind that he wanted to do the right thing. And, you know, I, I don't I don't know what else to say. I'm, I'm sad. I'm annoyed. I'm, like, super, super annoyed that, that it didn't happen. I don't think that there's... I don't know. Maybe I don't. I, I don't know. But I don't think that there's any like vote tampering or you know dead members voting or anything like that. I think that sometimes as content creators and social media people on the internet, we think that we have more more sway and we think that you know sharing memes and like that gets stuff done. But the the plain God's honest truth is that it doesn't. That we actually have to get off our asses and actually go do things. So I challenge people if you're going to the NRA annual meetings and and Adam does somehow end up on the ballot for 76 member, if he doesn't decline, uh, which I could totally even understand. He didn't mention that at all today. I don't, I don't even know if that's a thing you can do, but 
I, you know, vote for him. Like, get off your asses, go do it. You have to walk somewhere, and you have to go to the voting booth, and you have to look up your NRA number and all that stuff. Like, go do it. Like, get off your asses. There's a reason that Adam Crowd isn't winning the board. It's because not enough of us are getting off our butts and actually doing something about it. So, uh, to Adam, I say, battle well fought, sir. I'm super proud of him, and you know, I'm disappointed that that he didn't make it in. Well, you know, it's not so much that you know people aren't doing their part. Uh, it also has to do with the fact that a large demographic of NRA members are elderly, <laughs> and they're probably not going to be the ones who are going to be watching, you know, people like us on YouTube or listening to podcasts or whatnot. They're going to be listening to talk radio and getting the mailers every freaking day from the NRA and being told who to vote by them. So if you want to make a difference, those are the people that you need to talk to. You know, if you know um, friends of yours who are in the NRA or parents or whatnot, older folks, you're going to have to convince them and tell them why they need to vote for people like Adam. Yeah, I agree. Uh, anything else on that one, guys? All right, Savage, take it away. I'm sorry to hijack your segment. No, you're totally fine. I know I am, so, but the f- is kidding. <sighs> right. Well, going back uh, a little bit again to last week and our boy uh, Roger Benitez, uh, what he did last week was probably one of the coolest f- things that I've seen since – I want to say McDonald and Heller. Uh, California has been under the f-ing thumb of anti-gun politicians and activists for the longest time. And they have not had any respite. In fact, they've seen their rights eroded more than almost any other state <laughs> in the union. And uh, all of a sudden, part of that just disappeared. So Judge Roger Benitez uh, ruled that the magazine ban that California put into place that would actually make it illegal for them to even own uh, high capacity or standard capacity mags that they uh, were grandfathered in. He knocked that ban down and there was, I believe, a five-day window. And during that five-day window, all freaking hell broke loose. There, We still don't have final numbers, still waiting to see what that is, but it's likely in the millions of high capacity, again, quote unquote, magazines flowed from every single menu, magazine manufacturer in the country into California. I mean, I, I saw all kinds of people lamenting that they only had a thousand dollars to drop on magazines. And the, you know, the, the great thing about that ruling, and I highly encourage everybody to go and read it, is that Judge Benitez rips California State uh, Attorney General a new in, I mean, every single point the AG brought up, this guy absolutely destroyed with malice. <laughs> uh, one of the funniest parts is in the ruling, the AG ref- uses Mother jo- a Mother Jones article as evidence. Like that's what he states evidence instead of an actual study. And Benitez just ripped him apart for being so f-ing unprepared. It was fantastic. Um, unfortunately, after... He had uh, requested a stay, and the judge granted a partial stay. The, the way that he granted it was that anybody who had ordered magazines during that five-day period would be from uh, moving forward until it's seen by the uh, the Circuit Court of Appeals. Um, so that's at least going to be going to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. We'll see if the uh, appointees that – uh, Trump has put in place are going to make a difference. If not, it could end up going to the Supreme Court. So for right now, uh, you know, California, our boys over there, you got a brief glimmer, a taste of what it's like <laughs> for freedom. I think probably just like that one guy who took a picture in Washington, D.C.'s capital when their hand, uh, their uh, concealed carry ban was dropped for a single day. Uh, so it's, it's interesting to seeing these minute glimpses, actually explosions of freedom, and then what happens during that period of time. And hopefully uh, that'll carry forward into the future. Scott, what did you think about all that that went on? Uh, in California? Yeah. I thought it was great. I think it was great. I, why was it five days, though? Why was uh, it just five days? So I think it was like uh, the, the judge knocked it down on a Friday, and then the state attorney general didn't send in a request for a stay till like Tuesday or Wednesday. And then the judge granted par- a partial stay on Friday at 5 p.m. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think it's great. I hope that yeah. they get a little more of that. Yeah. 
I was talking to Tony Simon earlier and you know, he's in New Jersey and they've got ridiculous mag bands and stuff like that. And I was like, you're jealous. And he's like, yeah, yeah, duh. Oh, Kentucky, I, I, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Scott. Kentucky's already a pretty free state, but like we've recently had some stuff too. Uh, like we've got constitutional carry now as of like July. Saw that. Yeah. A permit to conceal anymore. That's good stuff. I, what, what, the more of that, the better. Please that the state AG made uh, for this case is that the, uh, because magazines were not in common use in California, it was okay to ban them. And I think that actually might've been part of the strategy of the judge. And I, I think a number of companies were getting their tallies and their totals together so that they could uh, send in the final numbers so that they could show that now during this five day period, five to seven day period that uh, suddenly magazines are in common use. Because if you go back to, the Satana ruling, uh, the judge, the Supreme Court actually said that, you know, 250,000 uh, stun guns counts as common use. So, you know, some retailers were pumping over a million probably magazines in. So I'm willing to bet that now the state won't be able to use that argument that magazines are not in common use in California. That would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. We, they outlaw something and they go, well, they're not in common use. Yeah, exactly. Well, they're, they're stupid. Yeah, it's a circular argument, and it's it's really disingenuous and dishonest anytime anybody says something stupid like that. Uh, this, moving on to our next story, actually more good news is coming out of the state of Rhode Island. Shout out to our buddy, Rhodey, who lives out there and who has been having to deal with this. So there were a ton of gun control bills on the, uh, on the docket over there in Rhode Island, and The interesting thing about Rhode Island is they have some of the most motivated gun owners on the planet there because every single time they have a meeting or, uh, you know, to discuss the bills, the court or that the house gets completely flooded with pro gun activists and they all stand above there and they're all there with like their yellow shirts on or, or, you know, with signs and everything. And they're all making sure that, Hey, you know, the, the ratio is crazy. It's like the four anti-gun people there supporting all the gun control bills. And there's like 4,000 pro gun people there. So I have to really give a shout out to the people, uh, gun owners there in Rhode Island. They were able to knock down, all the gun control bills, uh, they were held for further study. So, uh, you know, if you live in a small state like that and you have a strong uh, support, you know, group of support there, you have a chance to make a real difference. And it should really be an inspiration for the rest of us, you know. Uh, we have states here that have a ton of gun control in them, and there's a ton of gun owners in those states, especially states like California. So if you're able to organize like Rhode Island is, I know it's a smaller state, so it's kind of easy to do, but still, you know, you can make your voices that much louder. So, Scott, when you uh, – I mean, that's awesome for Rhode Island, but so Kentucky has pretty good gun rights and stuff like that. And when you guys got constitutional carry, was was there like a big deal made out of it or was just everyone was like, yeah, that, that's how it should be? I think it depends on who you talk to because, uh, I mean, there's some people that around here that are super excited about it. And then you have other people that are, you know, of course they argue, I can't believe they did that. And, and it's like people want to conceal guns. They're going to conceal them anyways. I mean, this just gives the law-abiding citizen that right now that they don't have to go to a special class and pay however much money to conceal uh, something they already have constitutionally. So, yeah, I think it's great. I, I love it. But, I mean, people are still going to have to, if anything, I think concealed carry licenses is probably going to increase here because now people are going to get used to concealing and then they're going to travel or they're going to need a license still. So, if anything, I think training and stuff will increase. Yeah. Uh, so I was talking to Matt DeVito from downrange firearms training, uh, back East. And he said that, that, that when he was in a state that got constitutional carry and I, I was, he runs a training company. I was like, did it affect you? He's like, no, uh, he's like the P he didn't teach, you know, the bargain basement dollar store, like get your concealed carry permit for 20 bucks classes and stuff like that. He's like the people that came to me came to me because they wanted to be trained and because they put a high value on training and I think that that's the same thing, you know, as long as you're not just a, a diploma mill putting stuff out, I think that you're going to be good to go. It's the ones that, you know, don't really teach anything of value that are going to be affected by stuff like that. Savage, next story. Next, moving on. So Thales is an Australian uh, gun manufacturer that was 
going to be selling an updated Steyr AUG called the Atrax uh, in the U.S. civilian market. Uh, I believe as recently as 2017, they were planning and getting the tooling up. In fact, in the United States, uh, they have a stateside manufacturer uh, of uh, I guess Dassin USA, uh, who manufactures different parts, including the barrel. Um, so they were all geared up to to start releasing that here in the USA. And even um, TFB TV had a, a preliminary uh, model that they went and shot. And there's a video uh, in the link there. But all of a sudden, there was an ethical concern. And that ethical concern was what happened in New Zealand. And so they decided not to sell any guns in the U.S. because they really hate money. (laughs) I mean, honestly, that's the only thing I can think of is that probably this is one of the very few gun manufacturers that's in the Australia area, and they're probably one of the sole suppliers for the Australian military. And if they want to secure a contract for the government – they'd probably have to virtue signal a little bit in order to say that, Hey, we want to keep this out of the hands of civilians because in civilian hands, it could be used to commit mass murder. So I think they may, might be under the mistaken, you know, concept that, uh, just supplying the Australian military is going to, you know, bring them in a ton of money. I don't really think they have a clue how much money they're missing out on not sending it to America. I mean, it's like, you know, missing the forest for the trees here. Yeah. No, I actually, (laughs) I'm kind of with you. Uh, I'm surprised by this. They've been at all the events we were at for like a couple years uh, trying to sell that Atrax. And now suddenly they're uh, not pulling for civilian reasons. Okay, good. I'll remember that. I promise. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to get a few people talking to them the next time they show up at the at Shot Show. <laughs> oh yeah, I I can't even imagine they would. Just, can you imagine the response if they showed up at Shot Show? Yeah, I, they should probably pull out. <laughs> yeah, it's weird because I mean the so guys, Jeremy, the guys, right? the guys that we talked to were actually pretty <laughs> cool dudes. But yeah, the the powers that be decided that they didn't want to be successful. I guess. Yeah. Well, some people who want to be successful are nuns, and these nuns are a group out of Oregon that are trying to kind of wrestle control of the board away from Ruger. So the next, I guess, level of slacktivism in in the anti-gun side is buying shares in gun companies and therefore buying influence that allows you to go to shareholder meetings and call for the uh, the organization in question to perform uh, certain tasks. And so there's this group of, you know, verily uh, social justice warrior nuns that have decided that they wanted to go and show Ruger. So last year they went and they demanded that the, uh, the company uh, do a study or issue a report that included evidence of monitoring of violent events associated with the products produ- produced by the company or efforts underway to research and produce safer guns and products or uh, assessment of the corporate reputational and financial risks related to gun violence in the U.S. So they made these um, demands and Ruger basically gave them the bare minimum and said, yeah, uh, none of this made a difference. So here you go. But you know they're not to be deterred they're basically keeping up the pressure and it's yet to be seen what they can actually do uh so far their shareholding you know percentage is very small so at most right now Sturm Ruger just has to kind of you know pat them on the head and tell them yeah we we did what we could oh darn uh but this could be kind of telling for the future because if, you know, say a certain billionaire wanted to start attacking companies that are publicly traded, the one thing he could do is buy up all their shares and then make a bunch of decisions that the board would have to comply to. And then, you know, who knows what could happen? Uh, the best strategy to defeat this obviously would for, be for the companies to go back private, but then they'd have to buy back all their shares and, I don't know if that's in the uh, in the cards for a lot of these companies, especially ones like Colt. 
<laughs> you know, they might actually get thrown under the bus on these on, on a move like this. It's a waste of, a waste of time. And this has actually happened to Smith and Wesson, uh, American Outdoor Company, the the exact same thing. And I'm pretty sure it was the exact same group of nuns that that are trying to do all this. I mean, the the anti gun people they're they're pulling out all the stops, and they've gotten clever over the over the years. Um, and I don't know if it's people just think that nuns, they like give them a little bit of extra credence or something, but yeah. Uh, and, and this report is a waste of time. So a waste of time, money, effort. And that's exactly what Smith and Wesson said, or American outdoors said when, when this was demanded, but I mean, they, they're going to have to do it. It's going to be, have to, <laughs> it's just so stupid. Yeah. Now if I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm recalling this wrong and maybe somebody couldn't correct me, but I believe it's illegal for a religious institution to engage in politics or advocate uh, for you know political change. And I don't know. This kind of seems like extreme political advocacy. And you know, a lot of these organizations are charities, so they're operating on five hundred one c threes and c fours, right? I think I think you're stretching it there, though. Yeah, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I think, I think they're, they're, it's, it's social activism, not political activism, is on yeah, that point. I think I agree. Wow, that's weird. Have I ever agreed with you, Aaron? I, I know we were on the same page right off the bat. That's <laughs> dude, and it's religious. <laughs> it's the apocalypse. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't mind being corrected. I'm just throwing that out there. No, I mean, dude, it's worth the argument, but I just don't yeah. think it. I don't think it, it's it. It it will hold water, but it's some you know some people may be like, yeah, you're right. So you know you're you're you got 33 percent of America. I bet will believe you, believe you. Yeah. So I don't remember the actual details, but American Outdoors they they kind of hit back on this and they were they were pretty upset about it. Said it was kind of ridiculous. And I hope that Ruger comes up with the same stuff. So we will. I guess we'll see shortly when we hear updates on this story. Scott, what do you think about all the anti-gun stuff going on across the U.S.? Just like it seems to be coming at us from every angle right now. I don't like it. <laughs> I agree 100%. I, I love this guy. <laughs> I don't like it either. It just seems to be every angle, every direction. Now we got nuns coming at us. I know. I never would have thought that. but I don't know, man. All right. I never believed in nuns anyhow. I said well, none, of need, none of that. None of that. We need nuns with guns. That's what we need. We need fun nuns. Yeah, fun nuns with guns. Fun nuns with guns. I think we have a show title. I literally was just moving over to, <laughs> to change the title from Aaron's Zero to Fun Nuns with Guns. All right, got it. Done. There literally, go. literally, you just got a glimpse of what it's going to be like with me on the panel. Just, I don't like it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> to the point, like, don't ask him questions anymore. It's like, Spoiler alert. <laughs> I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. It's like. Like the horse and Ren and Stimpy, no sir, I don't like it. <laughs> no sir, I don't like it. <laughs> All right, that's good, uh, guys. That takes us to our final uh, and last segment: the reviews. It's positively 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 Derek. And that's brought to, brought to you by the Sonoran Desert. I just bit my tongue. Brought to you by the Sonoran <laughs> Desert Institute, uh, SDI.edu. Uh, they're one of the sponsors of our party at uh, NRA annual meetings. And don't forget that Saturday night, April 27th, 6.30 p.m. at Sun King Brewery. And it should be a lot of fun. There's food and drink. First round's on, uh, on, on Savage. So you just got to find Savage. He'll buy you a beer. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Yeah, if, if you can find me, I'm really good at hiding. <laughs> I'm really good. <laughs> uh, Jeremy, want, take, it, take it away, buddy. Read the reviews. All right. Fun and informative by C. Hebden Five stars. Hebden on. Oh, wait, no. Heb- they, all say, they all say on. I don't know why. There's no dates or anything for yeah. some reason. Oh. Yeah. Uh, see Hebden, five stars. Love the show. The Firearms Radio Network is by far my favorite group of gun enthusiasts to listen to. WLS is my favorite. Don't tell the other guys. What up? Too late. Uh, awesome sauce by Maximum Penetration, but he spelled it wrong. Pen- penetration. Pen, penetration. Uh, five stars. Dear Jeremy. It's not how you spell my name. <laughs> well, it is if you don't wash your hands. If you- I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what the other mouth breathers have to say. In your opinion, they buying new which lever gun is. Wow, that's. <laughs> in your opinion, my 
modern day buying which buying new which lever gun is best Winchester Marlin or Henry? Um, I I would get a Henry. I, I I wish Henry sometimes had the loading gate, but the action is so smooth. I'm also going to uh, say that it's kind of funny that he calls us mouth breathers when clearly the the biggest mouth breather is Jeremy. No, I'm breathing through my nose. <laughs> Are you? It's your mouth is full of cramps. Motherfucker! The microphone is like right here on my nose, and every time I breathe, it's like. And if it's here where you can't hear me breathe, you can barely hear me talk. So to put it here next to my mouth where it's supposed to be, you're gonna deal with. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, a lot of hate. There. Hey, hey, Jeremy! <laughs> I'll tell you what. Send me whatever headset you want. I don't care what it is, and it'll show up. Yeah. This is like the third one we've gone through because the one that I had that I really liked that worked really well for like three years and the ears got all f***ed up on it. So oh, I can't find that one anymore. <laughs> you know, Jeremy, you haven't cut out once the entire show, but the second you start to like explode, like your internet cuts out. So I'm pretty sure that your internet is like sensitive to anger. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next, next review. <laughs> Addictive by talker two cents, five stars. Look up addiction and you will know why so many of us listen and then avoid calling the suicide hotline. I mean, it's dark, but okay. Is it like, are you, it's like, like, are you so addicted? You don't want to die. Yeah. They're, they're addicted to us and that, yeah. That keeps them going. Mm -hmm. I think so. Makes sense. It's just weird when he reads it like, look up addiction and you will know why. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, at at least I can read. Aaron. Yeah, at least I can read without roboting out on ten- intentional. You can't read, though. You f***ed the, you f***ed the intro up yesterday like six f***ing times. Because you I'm, can't read words on a screen. I'm grieving. Let, let it be. <laughs> <laughs> That's be my excuse for the rest of the week. Uh, uh, all right, n- next review. It's okay by Ryan KF. Five stars. If this show was just Jeremy and Nick, it would be better. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would do a show with Nick if it was just us answering questions. That that'll be fun. Mostly like, like when you guys get married. Why are you guys so gay? <laughs> Have you ever uh, hitting 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 your stide? I think he meant stride, but he put stide. By wheat thins. Okay. Five stars. This show has gotten so good since Nick has left. <laughs> I, I like I, I like the juxtaposition. He didn't leave though. He died. Yeah, he did. Yes. Yeah. De- dead AF. Yes. All right. So uh, we always switch off back and forth between iTunes and Facebook. For those who left them on Facebook, they will be on the next show. And guys, that'll do it for us. There's a place you can go, uh, and it's lovewls.com. And that's got four things you can do there. You can become a rooftopper, share links to your favorite show. Every time someone clicks them, you get points. The points turn into swag. You can become a Patreon, about to relaunch our Patreon rewards program, and you also get access to our Patreon-only Facebook group. You can buy cool swag like this hat and this shirt on there, and you can find all of our advertisers, their coupon codes, and links to their websites all in one place, which is pretty dang awesome. We always give out the gun-related advocacy groups, such as Second Amendment Foundation, Gunners of America, Firearms Policy Coalition, and the NRA and the NRA ILA. Uh, join them all, give money to them all. We need them all. And I think it's important. We give out the suicide prevention line every week. That number is 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-TALK. And you can text 741741 if you'd rather do that. Uh, Scott, it's been an absolute pleasure, man. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We truly appreciate it. Thanks for having me. It was a good time. It'll, it, I'm really looking forward to the panel. It'll be a good time. We'll hang out and just uh, talk about everybody just like I do every year. <laughs> it'll be a blast remind everyone where, where they can find all your stuff online uh you can find me on youtube uh facebook instagram twitter and oh gun streamer and the reloaders network all those just kentucky ballistics i'll pop right up all right that's awesome man thanks to everyone who uh listened watched everything else but don't forget we're here live every week on monday and wednesday except for when we're not but even then we're on demand every single day Go to welikeshooting.com slash show to subscribe. And Aaron, as we always say, thanks for listening. Get some medical training and shoot shoot straight. straight. That was so loud. Yeah, it is. (laughs) 
<laughs> so the show title, I went from Aaron Zero to Fun Nuns with Guns. Yes. I like it. I think that blew out my left earphone. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have to crank it so much, Sean? Jesus. I didn't mean to. I, I didn't know what happened. He cranks it all the time. What are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, we all do, right? It's true. Weirdo. Who? Aaron. Uh, what do he do? He doesn't crank it. Yes, he does. Remember that time I'm he got. It right now. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that time he got in trouble. <laughs> Pepperidge Farm remembers. Did you think that show was worth a dollar? Help the cast by visiting lovewls.com.